A lot of men, sadly, when it comes to this issue, have a peacetime mentality when they need to have a wartime mentality. The statistics tell us that 95% of 11 year olds will have looked at pornography. At the click of a button, millions upon millions, maybe billions of pornographic images are available to men. Wherever you go with that little device, countless images could be viewed by men and it's destructive. Welcome to the Creation Today Show, where we bring together interviews with experts and solid Bible teaching your host, Eric Hovind, affirms the ultimate authority of God's Word, the truth of creation, and why it matters to you. Does purity matter in an impure world? Men, let me talk to you for just a second. I know we want to be pure of heart, to be the man that God has called us to be. Yet you and I are battling against the three most powerful forces in the entire universe. They are enemies of truth. They, they want to see the destruction of our very souls. You are living on a real battlefield. Everywhere you turn, there are pitfalls and traps and landmines, and no one is immune to this war. Now, I completely understand our feelings of helplessness in these battles. You have experienced the guilt that comes with indulgence. You and I both know the shame that comes with hidden sin. And you know that you cannot be the man that God has called you to be without slaying this dragon of impurity. God is calling you to do something today. He wants you to, well, I can't put it any better, fight like a man to have a pure heart. Now, here's how I want to help you today. First, I have a very dear friend with us that's going to show us um, that he's actually written about this issue in a very practical and a very powerful way. I want you to listen to this conversation. Some of you men are going to have to listen to this twice. Second, in just a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to order a copy of his new book. It's called Fight Like a Man. We'll talk about that in just a second. And I want you to do this so that you can walk through the practical steps necessary to be who God has called you to be. And third, I'm gonna ask you to do the hard step of getting accountability, and that means talking about this with somebody else. And the reason I'm asking you to do these three things is because I've seen the results of those who do them and those who don't. And the difference is night and day. On, on one side, I see, I see life and joy, and, and I see a, a desire, not, well, not just a desire, but the ability to be who God has called somebody to be. On the other side, I see suffering and pain and regret, and I don't want that for you. So men, this show is for you. Now ladies, don't worry, you can listen in to this conversation and I think you will learn a lot. And I believe it'll be incredibly helpful no matter where you are in life. And if you're somebody who says, I'm not even into this purity thing, I don't know what you're doing listening, but I'm glad you're here. I also have some information for you. So today let's learn how to fight like a man in creation today. Hey, if you're new to the Creation Today Show, we're on a mission to disciple the world by really helping people know and defend their creator, God. We want to turn the stumbling blocks that keep people from seeing Jesus as the creator and the redeemer of mankind into stepping stones on people's journey to know the truth. To my social media viewers out there, thank you. Please hit those like and subscribe and follow buttons. Those really help us out a lot. To my podcast audience, we'd love a review of the show so that more people can find out about it. To my Christian Today partners on here, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I love this. I'm loving our new private Facebook group. Uh, thank you guys for posting in there and letting me see a little bit more about you. It is such a blessing for me to see your lives uh, more than just right now in this time, but kind of outside of this time as well. You guys, by the way, are going to love my guest today. As always, if you have questions for him during the conversation, please feel free to post them in our chat right here. Today's guest is a longtime friend. He serves as the president of an amazing ministry, Living Waters. It's an organization that equips people with practical ways to go and preach the gospel. He is an author, a speaker, an evangelist, a movie producer, a husband, a father, a friend. He is like the Renaissance man. He's known as Easy. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome my friend, Mr. Emil Zwayne. Easy, how you doing, buddy? Bro, after that introduction, you're going to make me ask myself for my own autograph. I mean, <laughs> give it to you. You are worthy <laughs> of that. You are a wordsmith. And I think, honestly, Easy, when I think of you, I think of 
no joke, I think of the wisdom of Solomon. And that's not lifting you up in an un, unjust way. I'm like, <laughs> I love talking to you because you, when I when I'm really asking you questions about something going on, you come back with incredible wisdom. And I'm like, wow, that wow. I, it, it's just it's a blessing to bounce ideas off of you and uh, I really Man, appreciate that. And, and you, bro, you, I, I, you've communicated I that in here. Oh, yeah. it's so good. I, I can't wait to hear what I have to say, man. <laughs> like, I want to meet myself now. Hey, thank you, bro. I, I'm I'm honored that <laughs> you would compare me to Solomon. I I, I just hope that uh, it's only his wisdom that uh, that I walk in, and and I think that's fitting. You mentioned Solomon because he's one of those men uh, to whom you know the things I've written in the book apply. But, bro, yes. I'm so blessed to be on here with you. You know, I, I've been doing a lot of interviews. Uh, regarding the book, but it's always sweet when I'm able to do them with a dear friend like you. I mean, we've known each other for years and we've partnered in ministry together. We've built a, a bond in Christ and you're one of my favorite people on the planet. So thank you so much for for having me on. And it's an honor. You remind me a, a lot of, whenever I think of you, I think of Judas. So it's, um, it's what? such an honor what? to be with you, brother. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, do you have a different Judas in mind than the one that's coming to my mind? Because I'm like, <laughs> I've never even kissed you, man. I've never <laughs> even done that. Like, Thank God for that, bro. Yeah. yeah. Dude, God has skyrocketed your... It's This is number one on Amazon's Christian men's books right now. Yeah, like, I, do, you, do you have a secret stash in your living room or in a closet? Have you been buying your own book, dude? I mean, that this is insane. It's look all the way I, to the top. I had all my favorite Arab relatives buy it. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I, I've been shocked, right? Number one new release uh, in the men's issues category, and it, it it got up to like number four out of like the bestseller category for men's issues. And out of all the books on Amazon, you know, Amazon, uh, Amazon has 32.8 million wow. different titles. And so it got up into wow. like the 1300 kind of range at one point in terms of overall books on Amazon. I'm like, what in the world, man? You, you got the amazing. right book, you know, well, I, but, but, it but tells I, think, you I think it's telling, hunger, right? It, yeah, exactly. I mean, men, we we are watching men fall right and left. We guys guys like I said in the introduction. We know we need this. The question is, are we going to do it? And that's what I want to talk. I want to get into practical stuff today. So I want to ask you why you you know what where all this got started with you, what your life experience is. But then I want to get into the, some of the practical stuff today as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, well, I'm excited. You know, in the preface of the book, Eric, I, I talk about how there are two indisputable or indispensable elements for any book to be successful, and that is necessity and passion. And when you think about necessity in terms of how a book like this is needed, you know, this is one of those things where not enough books can be written on the subject. There are some subjects that have, you know, been beaten to death by people over centuries, but this is one you can't have enough books on. And talk about necessity. I mean, you don't need me to rattle off the statistics to convince you that there is a massive pandemic that has swept the church, that is destroying men, it's destroying young people growing up in homes, it's destroying families, uh, it's ravaging the church. And so uh, there's a great need. And in connection with that, I have a huge passion to see men set free from this. You know, as a pastor, I've counseled countless men who have struggled with this. And even now I'm dealing with friends who tell me, please help us with our son, he's falling, or women that are saying my husband is, is totally enslaved by this. And as a man myself, I understand the temptations. I understand the lure. I'm bombarded every day. And so because of all those things, I, I was passionate to write a book that, that would hit all the sweet spots. You know, I wanted a book that was biblically based, but also theologically sound, and at the same time, gospel-centric, meaning that men live from the benefits that are found in the treasure house of the gospel. It's not just the instrument for salvation. We live from the gospel. It, it applies to every aspect of our lives. But then, Eric, I also wanted it to be hyper practical and extremely memorable. Yes. And so I wrote it with all that in mind. 
Well, and that, that's where I say you're a wordsmith because you give things in here. And there, there's there's times when I was reading this that I went, I wasn't expecting you to go there, but the way you're a great storyteller. So those are the things that stick with my in my mind or some of the stories that you went through in this. So you provide story all the way to practical application. But before we get to some of the, some of the goods of the book, for those of you that uh, for some reason are not going to be part of Emil's incredible audience, which you should be. By the way, how long did it take you to write this? How long were you working on this? Uh, it took a long time, man. You know, I, I started it October of 2020 and January 1st of 2021, I made a commitment. I'm going to write every day until I finish this book. Because you know how it is with everything we have going on with family, ministry, and life. If you say I'll get to it when I can, it'll never get done. So I made that commitment. My head would not hit the pillow every night until I visited that file, even if it was a few sentences. So from January 1st, 2021, 600 and something, some odd days later, I finished it. But then, you know, you had the editorial process and the review. And so it's been, it's been in the works for a long time. I'm like, is this really real? Like, did it really become a reality? But by God's well, I, grace, honestly, it has. I can tell because the wordsmithing of this really is good. It really is powerful. And that's something that I appreciate. Um, it's it's not like you're wondering, you know, where you're going. You you have a plan and you're taking people on a journey. Um, t- tell me real quick as we as we jump in, because I want to get, I only have a social media for like the first half hour. Um and, and I and I realize, I mean, if you look at what does it take to have a prosperous society, I mean, you look at the the American humanist who would say, well, we're just trying to make, you know, humanity prosper and humanity. It's like you would end up going to the pages of scripture to find out where and how humanity prospers in every every culture we look at. When we when we veer off into sexual deviation, it ends up being the end of a culture. So that's a whole, I mean, that's one reason, let alone being held to the standard of the, the accountability to God. So what, where do you think, where, where have you seen, as you study this, where does sexual temptation and sexual sin actually take us? Where does it lead? Yeah. Well, you you nailed it, Eric. You, you look back on all the great empires, right? You can look at the, the Greek empire. You can look at the Roman empire. Uh, and now you can see America, right? The world's greatest superpower that has exported uh, it's culture to the world, sadly, right? And so it, it's having major impact and major influence. Well, to, to look forward in terms of where we're going, we have to look back. And all you got to do is look back to Romans chapter one and what scripture says in terms of what happens when God gives people over who have suppressed his truth in unrighteousness. And you know very well, Romans one is basically in co- a commentary on the resulting sexual immorality that we end up seeing. And that's where we're at as a nation. That's where we're at really as a planet. Again, because America exports, but also other cultures have, of course, they're, they're ingrained and embedded sin, but but we've had a massive, massive impact in that regard. And look, scripture is clear on this, right? First Corinthians talks about how that every sin that a man commits, he commits outside of the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. It's a, it's a distinct sin that that has massive repercussions attached to it in a distinct way. And so that's what's happening, right? Sexual morality is is almost like a given over type of sin in terms of of its its category and its impact. And that's what's happened in America. And we've seen the ramifications of that, of walking away from God, his ways, his truth, it ends up in gross immorality to where we see ourselves calling men, women, women, men, where anything goes now. It's not just homosexuality. It's it's polygamy. It's polyamory. Uh, it, it's every form of sexual deviation you could imagine in your heart and mind. And it's, it's destroying the world, sadly. At, at the time of this recording, the news has just come out of a very prominent pastor who has fallen... Uh, made and made immoral decisions, and I know those are blown up around the world. It, it, it is ironic to me how the world says we don't want Christian standards, and then when a Christian fails, like, oh, look at this standard you didn't hold yourself up to. Um, right. But the, and then Mike Winger just posted. He's he's a friend of yours. He just said, "Hey, little tweet tweeted out, uh, posted on X. Little reminder: there are many who are faithful and who have not failed." And I go, "Thank God for those." But I also know the statistics. 50% of pastors in the church struggle with some form of pornography or immorality with the lust in their mind. So this, and 70% of men in the church that are not in leadership are struggling with this. So 
I'm like, maybe that tells us why this is a number one on, on people getting it because they know they need help and help is available. We just got to put in that work. Yeah. And Eric, look, the, the statistics also tell us that 95% of 11 year olds will have looked at pornography. When I was growing up as a kid, you know, you needed to go and maybe get a magazine from your friend's house whose dad had a stash, or you had to try to steal one or a video from a, a gross liquor store that sold them or whatever. But now, man, at the click wow. of a button, millions upon millions, maybe billions of pornographic images are available to men. And it's not just you have to go to a certain place. Wherever you go with that little device, right, that we carry with us, it's almost become an, kind of an appendage because it's it, it, we die if we don't have it. Anywhere, at any time, countless images that could be viewed by men. And and it's it's destructive. And so <laughs> the big problem is, Eric, is that a lot of men, sadly, when it comes to this issue, have a peacetime mentality when they need to have a wartime mentality. Oh, yeah. I mean, yes. can you can, can you yes. can you imagine a soldier being deluded into thinking that he's on a luxury cruise ship heading for the shores of Bora Bora to a an exotic resort when in reality he's on a Higgins boat heading for the shore of wow. World War II Normandy? Can you imagine wow. this guy? He'll be sauntering off the Higgins boat clad in a bathrobe, some fluffy slippers and a remote control in his hand. And you and I both know he is going to get smoked. And yeah. so that's what men are doing. They they have no battle plan. That's why the subtitle for the book is a bold biblical yes. battle plan for personal purity. You think of all the things we prepare for in life, right? We prepare for our weddings. We prepare for our retirement. We prepare for our vacations. No one just wakes up one day and says, hey, let's go on a one month vacation like in 10 minutes. <laughs> no one says, hey, let's plan like a, a mega blockbuster wedding in the next day. No one gets to like 65 and says, maybe I should start planning for my retirement right now. No, we plan, but we don't develop a battle plan for one of the biggest war features in our lives as men. And so it's it's time for men to wake up and recognize they need to have a battle plan and they need to be sharpened and trained and ready for the battle and engage in what I call preventative preparedness. You prepare ahead of time so that you can prevent certain attacks. You know, there's that doctrine called peace through strength. It was a famous doctrine Reagan really established way back when. When, when you bolster yourself and become so strong, it minimizes the, the, the nature of the attacks your enemy has on you. And scripture says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, we need to reinforce that. And so that's what I talk about in the book. Okay, I want you to go through the three enemies. I alluded to it at the beginning and you talk about it in the book. Before you do though, uh, hey, I want to give away a couple copies of your book. Are you cool with signing yeah. a couple copies and giving a couple copies away? Let's do it, man. I mean, you Let's already bought it. them and they're in your living room. So yeah, you know, hundreds of plenty. millions of copies sitting <laughs> under, under my bed. <laughs> hey, this will be for our partners. If you're a partner and you're on here with me uh, and you can chat with me, um, I want you to, uh, how about this? If you're a partner and you want to grab a copy of his book, no lying, you got to be honest with this, okay? I want you to put the number, a number in the chat. And here's the number I need you to put. How many push-ups do you think you can do right now? I want you to put that and don't lie to me, okay? I might have you send me a video. Oh, Jacob says 15. All right, that's pretty good, Jacob. All right, you got a 20 in there. Okay. Got a lot of guys wanting the book. Okay, so ladies in the office, you guys pick. Uh, who, <laughs> crazy Is that John oh, Harris? Is that John Harris from England, I wonder? Someone said 150. Oh. <laughs> That's great. I'm, I'm trying to get over there to scroll down. 100, dude, I'm going to be with John in like a month in Orlando. If I'm going to uh, see the 150. Like yeah, in a bro. row, John, not in a yeah. day. He, he, in meant, a he, meant, he meant to say 1.5 push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think he meant to One. say. One. One and a half. Okay, that's good. Okay, some of me, I'll, I'll tell you who the winners are uh, here in just a second. You guys are awesome. John, love you, buddy. Tony um, Smiles okay, is in here. What in the world, man? Tony, I love it. Tony's, Tony joins us every week. Tony's amazing. <laughs> Tony's my homie. I love Tony. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man, too cool. Um, okay, go into, and if you want to do this in rap, you feel free. Guys, I, easy. He's a wordsmith. He's amazing. He could literally write this whole book <laughs> as a rap, and we could sing the entire thing. Oh, man. Tell me what our three enemies are. And I, even James in the chat earlier asked the question. He said, hey, how can parents protect their children or how can single men protect themselves in a culture that is so explicitly hypersexual? How do you, I mean, it's, it is in front of us all the time. Yeah. How do you protect yourself in that environment? So talk about the, 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 
the enemies, and then let's get into that. Yeah. So our infamous enemies, of course, and this won't be new to anyone, but uh, they are the the flesh, the world, and the devil. Uh, they have always been our enemies and always will be. Now, the flesh is really the true enemy. It, it is at the at the at the heart of our own animosity, and that is our wicked, fallen, sinful nature. But there is what Dr. John Street calls the outward enemies of opportunity, and those are the world and the devil. And so what they do is they ally with our fallen sinful nature and, and they take opportunity because of our fallenness and our propensity towards sin in our flesh and they capitalize on that. And so we need to be aware of them, right? We, we can't be ignorant of Satan's schemes to begin with as, as one of those outward enemies of opportunity. And so Satan comes and he hits us with the same three-pronged approach that he used with Adam and Eve, right? He's a one-trick pony, there's nothing new. First, he hits them with discontent. Has God said you can't eat of every tree of the garden? Whereas God has said you could eat of every tree except for one. So he he hones in on that and creates this element of discontent. He does the same thing in the realm of sexual immorality, right? He he blinds us to all the blessings God has given us. You remember Haman back in, in, in the book of Esther where he was dealing with Mordecai and he couldn't stand it that Mordecai wouldn't bow before him. And so he calls together his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends, and he enumerates for them all of his blessings, his wealth, his children, his, his uh, position, how the queen had invited him and the king twice at, to an exclusive banquet. And then he says this to them, all of this avails me nothing. After he rattled off all of his blessings, all of this avails me nothing. It means nothing to me. It's worthless so long as I see Haman sitting, uh, Mordecai sitting in the king's gate. So he led, he led him to discontent in that sense. He does the same thing with us. God calls us to purity, but we want this one thing. God says you can't have, and you can't have it because it's bad for you. It's destructive. So we become discontent. Then he hits them with disbelief. No, no, you surely will not die if you do this. And so he deceives us in the realm of sexual immorality into believing that it's not really as bad as God says it will be in terms of the consequences for sexual sin. But scripture is clear. Every sin that a man commits in Corinthians, he commits outside his body. He who commits sexual morality sins against his own body. It's highlighting sexual immorality as a distinct sin that has egregious consequences. So we can't go into disbelief and thinking, oh, well, it's not that bad. I can get away with it. It's no problem. I've been doing it. Nothing has happened. We, we can't go into that disbelief. We will suffer the consequences and so will others. And then finally, deification. No, no, you will become like God knowing good from evil. In other words, you'll become the final arbiters on what is right and wrong. You'll become autonomous and rule your own life. And Eric, you know, that was the sin that led to Satan's destruction and his fall, right? Yes. And so we need to wake up and say, wait a minute, no, how foolish am I to think I can take God's place? I, as a human being, can't even control my own hiccups. Am I insane? <laughs> and and so, so we, we, we get to, you know, exploring that we are foolish to try to usurp God's place. God's opposed to the proud. He gives grace to the humble. And so this is a quick highlight, but I get into the details of what, what those plans are against us. And then I help men to formulate a counterattack and to fight effectively. Oh, so good. So good. So Satan hasn't changed. He wants you to be discontent. He wants you to disbelieve, and then he wants to deify you. And men, let me ask you something. Can't you tell that's exactly what God, uh, what Satan has done in your heart, what the world, the flesh, and the devil have done? And, and this is where worldview, and Easy talks a lot about this, your worldview matters. I mean, if you believe the flesh is basically good and that all those desires are good, you're going to be fooled. We are living in a sin-cursed world, so your worldview absolutely matters. But if you're discontent, you'll disbelieve. And you, I say, do you think men know the ramifications or do you think Satan has even deceived them in what some of them ex have experienced the broken relationships? And I guess that's just how far has, got, has Satan led them down that road because it, it, it never satisfies yeah. and it leads to worse and worse and worse. Yeah, sure. You have men who are in different predicaments and different stages of their sin, but but oftentimes, Eric, men are blinded to the repercussions. And and it's kind of like this. I often say, look, if our lungs were sitting on the outside of our chest and you could just see your lungs, there would be a whole lot less smokers in this world, right? You've seen the, the healthy lung and the smoker's lung pictures that they put side by side. Yes. Well, the smoker's not seeing his lungs, right? He's just going about life. Hey, I'm still fine. I'm, I feel okay. I'm great, right? 
But but if they could see the damage that's wow. happening and what's going on, and, and men don't realize what's happening to this, their spiritual man, the wounds that they're inflicting upon themselves, and they're not realizing the ramifications of minimizing their impact for the glory of God because they're earthly minded, not eternally minded. The destruction for their kids and, and their wife and their, their friends and the body of Christ and the testimony of the gospel. We're so selfish and self-centered that, that we do that. And you ask any man, hey, um, if, if someone came and they were going to you know, punch your wife in the face, would you jump in front of her and take the blow and then defend her? If someone had a gun pointed at your children, your parents, your dearest friends, and they were about to pull the trigger, would you jump in their way and take that bullet and then fight to defend them? Oh, of course I would, right? But we're not willing to fight on this front to protect all those wow. that we love and the glory of God. Bro, there's a problem and men need to wake up. And Eric, let me just say this before we go too far down the road. This is a book of hope. I don't beat men down in this book. I, I, I confront them as men and I, I have man-to-man -man talks with them as we need. But there is hope. That's the whole point of the book. You can be set free. Christ can, can take you and change you. The, the power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you if you're a believer. And if you're not, the, the true freedom in this comes from coming to know the Savior who can transform you, wash you clean, and give you the power of His Holy Spirit. So men need to wake up and recognize there is hope and help. You just need to do it God's way. And there's a really good word, Eric, that people don't like. It's called the word repentance. Yes. That, is, that is one of the most hope-infused words in the world because it's indicative of potential for change and transformation and forgiveness and healing. And so the book gets deep into how God can set you free by his grace. And you can definitely put this behind you. No question at all. Well, let me give away a couple copies of this to help a couple people right now. Uh, you can get this at creationtoday.org. Uh, we'll ship from Living Waters. But uh, we're going to ship and you got to sign a copy of this, okay? Uh, I'll do so it. Gary Gary Navinger and Wesley both are going to get a copy of this book from EZ with his autograph, which makes it worth even more to somebody who cares about that. Uh, so we're going to ship uh, you guys each your own copy of the book. Let me encourage you guys, go to creationtoday.org. Actually, if you go to creationtoday.org slash fight, creationtoday.org slash fight, it'll send you directly to the right page uh, to, to get this resource. It really is something that I think you ought to have. Uh, men, if you haven't understood what, what uh, Easy said at the end there, of repentance and you don't see anything you need to repent of. Can I ask you to see to to seek out and search the face of God and ask him to soften your heart? We we are living in a world that is being totally destroyed and we can look back and see where we left the authority of God's word, where we left purity, where we left individual responsibility before God. And now we don't have family responsibility, church responsibility or civil responsibility. Everything is tumbling. Men can we be who God has called us to be as men? Can we, can, can we be done with the shame and the guilt and actually slay this dragon of impurity in our lives? Would you please get the help? Would you start? Thank you for listening to this conversation. That was number one. Number two, I told you, I'm just going to ask you to get this book. Go to creationtoday.org slash fight and get a copy of this book today. And then would you be held accountable? Would you open yourself up to other men and start being accountable. I'm telling you, it will help significantly. If you want some more of the practical steps, I'm gonna talk with Easy for the next half hour with our partners. Come on over to creationtoday.org, partner with us, and hear the rest of this conversation. Uh, until then, go get the book and follow Easy. Easy is on all the social media networks. So he's on X, he's on Facebook, he's on Instagram. And you can just type his whole name, Emil Zwayne, but it's Emil Easy Zwayne on all those different channels. Uh, please get a hold of him. And would you go to livingwaters.com, livingwaters.com, and subscribe to their emails because they send out powerful, helpful videos, witnessing tips, encounters. Uh, they're always sending stuff out to bless people and, and to help disciple the body of Christ, to help us be who God has called us to be on so many levels. This is one more of their resources that they've created to do this. So please go to Living Waters. We're putting it in the chat, livingwaters.com, and make sure you're subscribed to what they do. And uh, and they should donate. I should mention that. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, Easy doesn't mind the donors coming along and saying, I love what you're doing. Can I help? And they literally put the gas in the machine to make it run. So 
Love that. Is there any final words or did I miss anything on where people should go uh, on before I have to let social media go? Yeah, no, that you got it all right. And uh, okay. again, my hope is that men will take heed to the word. And look, Eric, again, the, the, the point in all of it is, is for people to be Bereans. Take what's in the book, examine it with scripture, and then you have the final decision. Will you be a doer of God's word or not? And if you are, you'll be like the person who built their house on the rock. And when the storms come, you'll be standing. Amen to that. Oh, Tony is mentioning the podcast. Of course, if you don't subscribe oh. to the Living Waters podcast, <laughs> I think everybody in the world already does, Tony. They're like ranked number one podcast. They got a great podcast. So <laughs> we're blown away. And, and Eric, I'm <laughs> so humbled awesome. by the endorsements in this book. Dr. John MacArthur endorsed it. Um, Ray Comfort, uh, Jack Hibbs, uh, Ken Ham. Ken, Ken Ham wrote The Forward. Yeah, uh, which, is, which is humbling. So I praise God for that. That's a, one day I'll be big enough. You'll get my endorsement and be proud oh, of that. Okay, bro, easy. if one I got day. yours, I'd get rid of all the rest. That's all I need, Eric Hovind. <laughs> yeah, wow. <you> <laughs> Oh, love it. Hey, social media, thanks for joining me. I got to let you guys go. Next week, we're going to have 12 short conversations that every Christian needs to hear before the election. So if you're listening to this after election, you still should hear these conversations because there's always an election coming. Well, hopefully there's always going to be an election coming in America. But next week, I want to give you 12 short conversations that every Christian needs to hear. It's from the TPUSA Faith Believer Summit. I was down there and got to record with a bunch of amazing guys talking about how the church needs to respond to our current political situation. You're really going to want to tune into that next week. So I'll see you next week live at noon. Until then, go share the gospel with somebody who needs to hear it. I'll see you next week.